Hey, Lynn. Good morning. <clears throat> I lay this out so that I have a thumbnail. <laughs> Hang on, my daughter is messaging me real quick. <laughs> Hang on, she's giving me booze menu for the day. It's on the menu. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hi, Zoe. Hi, Queen. Ashley. Darla. Hi, guys. Jill's. Hey. Jill Zany. Crazy. Unique style. <laughs> All right. Let me answer my daughter real quick. Um. Okay. Hi, Patricia. Can't say to David how to tell you that I caved and got a partial diamond. Yeah, I like the partial uh, diamond painting ones, Patricia. They're, they're, they still take time, but they don't take as much time, obviously. Hi, Robin. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, Faithful. <coughs> Hi, Amber Moon. Hi, everybody. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Hi, Melody. Hi. Uh, let's see who else am I missing? I think I got everybody so far. Patricia. Yes. Yeah, say hi to Patricia. Here come the cats. Cats are in here today. Mm -hmm. Happy Monday, Louise. Hi, Art Peace. Hi, Terry. Oh, wait, Terry. Good morning. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, wait. It's not turned up here. <laughs> Hope you had a good weekend, Terry. <laughs> okay all right queen thanks for stopping in stop back in if you get a chance hi pecola hi roxanne hi marianne good good I, are you uh still making tons of uh are you still making tons of um pencil cases terry Hi, Louise, Zeely. <laughs> Let me get a sip of coffee. Thanks, Zeely, for that funny comment you left on the Hubster and I's video. Making bags so I have a shawl this weekend. Okay. Hi, Elaine. Elena. Um, yeah, if y'all didn't see or if you missed it, Hubster and I did a little coloring, an hour-long coloring video this weekend, over the weekend. <laughs> okay, Pamela. <laughs> Thanks, Roxanne. It was fun. He had fun. And um I I think I've talked him into doing a book um book tube thing. I mean, just like maybe once a month or something, come on and talk about some books. Not anything like he won't do his own channel or anything like that. Um <laughs> oh thanks, Zeely. It was so much fun. We had a lot of fun. Hi, Barbara. Don't forget about the card game, too. The card game. Oh, yes. Uh, let me make a note of that. Let me make a note of that because I, I did completely forget about it. <laughs> I did forget about it, um, Pacola. Thank you. Pacola's the memory mod. She's the memory mod. 
Okay, card. Okay, I made a note of that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, cats are under the table in everything. What are you doing under there? Come on now, get out. Get out from there. Come on. Oh my gosh. He's all hunkered up in a drawer under the table behind the shelf. Well, he's going to lay there, so let's just leave him be. <laughs> I think he thinks he's hiding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My dad was enjoying listening to you. Oh, about the book. Yeah, Ashley. He loves, I mean, he loves history and he loves old Hollywood and old Hollywood movies. So he knows a lot about them. Although he did say, he said afterward, he got one thing wrong. He said, oh, no, that wasn't. Uh, Maureen O'Hare that was in Psycho it was Vera Miles, the picture right before. He goes, it was Vera Miles. So anyway, he he was correcting himself on a couple things afterward. But yeah, but he had fun doing it. It was just, you know, it was off the cuff. He just did it. He just did it on the fly. So he did. I thought he did really well for, you know, not really doing videos. Hi, David. Hi, Kimberly. C Hi, CB. Hi, Riri. And Riri. I finally sent you out some happy mail now that I know who you, your real name. I could not find you for nothing. I finally figured out who you are, Riri. So you got happy mail coming. I just wanted you to know that now that I know who you are. Oh my gosh, guys, when you send me your addresses, tell me what your screen name is. Because then I go, who is this person? You know, or you send me a, you send me some PayPal or something like that, and then I don't know who you are. It's like, I, so anyway, Riri, I think I figured you out, Riri. You got you got happy mail coming. Ashley says my dad does too, but he's stuck on to. Oh, oh, good. I'm so glad he liked it, Ashley. I'll pass it on to Hubster. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I got I did a big big batch of happy mail last week. So yeah. <clears throat> so I do have new fresh coffee brewing. So that should I go run get that here in a little bit. <sighs> got so many cat ears on my screen on my, my keyboard here. <sighs> I can't even get them all off. <laughs> Hi, Diane. So if you're watching the show for the first time, it's a chat and it's, well, I don't say chat and colors, chat and arts, coffee and art in the morning. So we do a lot of uh, chatting at the beginning. There's chatting during the show. There's a live chat going on. So um, yeah, <laughs> it was fun. We had a good time. Thanks guys for watching. And um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's what that's what we do here. We chat. And by the way, guys, I did make a video over the weekend. It's not uploaded yet. I mean, I haven't uh, made it public yet. But I did a um, I, I, on Wednesday. On Wednesday, this is my plan. Let's see where is it? Where did I put them? Where did I go? Oh, I got piles everywhere. Where? Ah, oh, here they are. Hang on. Let me get this out here. I won't show you what I did the video on because that would be a surprise. I'm going to post it tomorrow. But on Wednesday, on Wednesday, we're going to do colorist special effects too. So if y'all been waiting to do these, some of these projects, we're going to do that on Wednesday. And I did make, I was going to do two parts. I did an hour. <coughs> I did an hour video preparing for this book for Wednesday. So I will upload that video tomorrow. Dirt, just just on a reg, you know, Tuesday, nothing, nothing, you know, I'm not doing anything on Tuesday as far as videos. So I'm going to upload a video on Tuesday. It's not live. And I've got to tell you guys, it is so hard for me to do videos without you guys here. It's just so much fun to talk to you. Hi, Artsy. Hi, Kim and Kimberly. Hey, Joey. And uh, so, and Rachel, when you guys are not here, it's just not the same making videos. I feel like kind of, eh, eh, you know, eh, eh, wah, wah. <laughs> but I did, I do them anyway. Hubster, you know, when I did the one with Hubster, it was just us too, but we were interacting with each other. So, um, yeah, it's just not as fun. It's not for me, you know. Hi, Gabriel. 
Hi, Marie. And yes, I do miss you, Terry. I do. But anyway, so I made about an hour long video prepping in this book for Wednesday. So I'll put that up tomorrow, but this is what we're going to do on Wednesday. So FYI, Wednesday, we're going to be doing color and special effect. Okay. <clears throat> so today I'm going to show a little bit of a book haul. Oh, thanks, Ely. I don't know. Do y'all really like them? I mean, I think some, you know, everybody says, oh yeah, we like the videos with, you know, just you doing a project. But I don't know. I'm not convinced yet. I'm not convinced that you really do. Hi, Scooby. Hi, Grace. You got your happy mail. Oh, you're welcome, Graceland. Yeah, I sent out a bunch of happy mail last week. So, hi, Roxanne. Um, so, I don't know. Y'all, you know, I mean, I believe you. You you say you do. But, you know, I'm not really convinced <laughs> that y'all like the vi vi videos without you guys being here. Um, aw, oh, thank you, Gabriel. So, um, yeah, so we went to Barnes. Well, we actually went out and saw, um, you saw the kids over the, you know, my grands, uh, on Saturday. And then we stopped by Barnes and Noble, of course. Their Barnes and Noble is the best Barnes and Noble. I love their Barnes and Noble. Uh, I don't think it's as good as the one in, uh, like LA, the like three, I don't know, two, I don't know, it's huge, but, <coughs> but it's a good one. And uh, I always find something when I'm there. So, of course, you know, I found some stuff. <laughs> now, I actually think I got this and this I got at Books A Million. These I got at uh, Barnes & Noble. So, yeah. So, I'm going to show that. And then we're going to, I got, I got a haul. I got, I got a new, I got some supplies. Y'all know I need some new supplies. Hi, Pranshu. Yes, of course I remember you. Good to see you in India. I, I forget what city, but uh, yeah, welcome. Oh, Rachel, I got a new puppy. She's a cute. Oh, well, make sure you post pictures, Rachel. So I did go up and see the kids, and I took um, I took Boo her uh, kit. I took Boo her um, diamond painting that you know I showed y'all last week. Um, I got Boo her. Um, penguin and y'all remember uh i got a, i took this one to show her that i'm gonna frame it for her. i i did take my uh, partial diamond painting up to show her and i said i'm gonna have it framed for you but i want her to at least see it because she got her um penguin well she dove right into that penguin we first set up the little we got some little bead holders set that up so that she could you know um pick the, you know, pick a little, you know, little thing of beads one at a time. And she loved it. Oh, hi, Scoops. Oh, okay. Hi, Teresa, Louise. Let's see I'm sure I'm missing some people. Diana, thanks, everybody. I miss saying hi to you. I'll try to, you know, make sure I catch you throughout the show. Hi, other Kim. We got like three Kims. Hi, Rainbow. Uh, and if you talk to me, make sure you put it in caps. Thank you, Diana. We had fun doing that video. So oh, I've got so much to catch you up on. I've got so much to talk about today, guys. Lots of things. Okay, so I got, um, uh, let me see, I have a picture here somewhere. So we, we went up there and Boo dove right in. Okay, so here's Boo working on her diamond painting right there. And so I didn't want Cam to feel left out. I saw this at Michael's. And what I'm probably going to do is do this as a giveaway. Um, I'm going to probably do this as a giveaway later. But I, I was at Michael's last week. And they're selling diamond paintings. Now, I got to say, they're expensive. They did have them 50% off. But their, um, their kits are like the a big diamond, like probably about the size of the one I got boo on Amazon. It was like $29. It was like $29, even though it was 50% off that day that I was there. I said, ah, oh, you know, I'd already bought boo the, the penguin anyway. I wanted to make sure she liked it. Hi, Jean. So, but they had these little bracelets there. Okay. They had this one and they had one that had a cat. 
and then something else and something else. I don't remember. So I got one of these for Cameron to work on, you know, just while Boo and I were um, working on the big one. <clears throat> and it comes with three bracelets, has a little tray, the wax, the pins, you know, the little pin has everything to do it. Now he was, he did one while Boo and I were sitting there, you know, just sorting beads and, and, and uh, labeling the bead cups and all that. <clears throat> he got one done. Now, here's the thing about these. And I just got it just for something so he didn't feel left out. But um, are these really going to hold up as a bracelet? I told him, I said, now, I wouldn't give that as a gift or anything. Because I don't know how long those beads. I don't know how long. Um, okay. All right, Pran, Prans. I will. I will look at your Instagram later. So I don't know uh, how how that's going to hold up because these are just stuck on there, right? They're just stuck on there. And I don't know if it's going to really hold up as a bracelet, but anyway, so I'll probably end up doing a giveaway with this guys, just so somebody else can try some diamond painting. But here's the thing about it. Don't, don't think that that's going to hold up as a actual wearable. <laughs> it may, Hey, it may. But I don't know. But these were like normally at Michael's. I think they were like $12. But I got it for like 6 because it was 50% off. But I would not pay $12 for this. I paid 11 something for Boo's huge big penguin, right? Okay, so there's that. Uh, let's see. What else do I have to catch you all up on? Uh, yeah, Zoe, there, it's, it's fun. And like I said, I like the partial one because, um, it, that one took me the one I just showed you the pastel girl. It took me about five hours, not including about an hour's worth of sorting the beads, labeling the bead or the, the, the drills or whatever you want to call them. The little, you know, not really beads. There's no holes in them. Um, <laughs> I don't think it would come apart. I don't think like the whole thing would just drop beads or drop, dr you know, drop the little drills. I don't think that would happen. Uh, but you would probably, they'd start kind of picking off, flick, flick. flick. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, no, it's not done yet, Pacola. And um, you could show your painting. Again. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -mm. So, yeah, I have, I still keep the cover on to protect it till I put it under glass. But uh, again, what I did with this is I mounted it with double sided tape onto a piece of foam board. And then, of course, this will get framed. But here's the one that I did. And again, it, this right here, which is only a partial, took like five hours, right? That took five hours, not including about an hour of the sorting of the drills. Leave a trail of trails when you're walking. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's a good one, Terry. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. So I did post it on Instagram. But, you know, you want to protect it because, you know, there's still some sticky bits in, in between. You don't want cat hairs or stuff on it. And uh, so I showed Boo how to do it, how to peel back and work on it. And she said, oh, this will give me something to do other than being on my phone. I went, good. <laughs> So, yeah. So I'll have that one framed for Boo. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, it, yeah, it's kind of like a, it's a 5D, a 3D painting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I did the I did a video on it. <coughs> My first attempt at, at uh, diamond painting. And then over the week, if y'all did not watch it, and thanks everybody for all the thumbs up. Thanks everybody that's here and giving thumbs up already. Hubster and I did a, a coloring in the Western book. Let me get that out here. So we did a, we, he, he talked about every single one of these. He talked about every one of these and the different movies he likes because he loves Westerns. He loves old movies. And here are the two. I did not finish my Walter Brennan, uh, but these are the two we did. We did this in just about an hour. So this is the one Hubster did, and he signed it, and I had him put, you know, the book and the and the author, you know, this was out of a creative haven. Tim Foley was the editor, the designer of them, 
And uh, so I told, put that, and so we signed it and everything. So this is the one Hubster did, and in an hour, I thought that was pretty good for him, never having picked up a Copic. This is all just Copics and a couple of a silver and a gold gel pen. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, thanks for watching when you can, Pran. Hi, Kenneth. Oh, wow. that That's a big accomplishment in a weekend, Kenneth. <coughs> Uh, yeah, you did, Kim. Enjoyed him talking about each one. Yeah, I thought he did good. And um, so I think what he, I'm going to try to get him to do, <clears throat> sorry, guys, try to get my voice going here. What I want to try to get him to do is like a book, a book to video, like once a month on my channel, you know, talk about a book uh, or two. I said, well, you could talk about a book every, like, you know, an hour. He goes, oh, I could get more than one done in an hour. <laughs> I said, okay, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to try to get him to talk about some of his old Hollywood. You know, he reads biographies. He reads biographies and history. That's pretty, and some, and nonfiction. You know, he's not a fiction reader. I can't remember the last time he ever read a fiction book. Um, so, uh, anyway, I thought he did really well for his first time with, and this was with Copics. And so we just, we just had a few, we just used a few. I didn't want to overwhelm them with, you know, thousands of Copics and, you know, hundreds. I just, we just did a few. We had a handful of Copics and, oh, thanks, Kenneth. That was, it was a lot of fun. So he, what, what was fun for me is all his uh, talking and knowledge about all the actors and the movies and stuff. So that was really fun. We did that on Sunday. We just, the two of us just recorded about an hour and that's up on YouTube as well. Okay. So let's move that out of the way. All right. So I laid these out like this because I, you have, when you first go live, it asks you to take, do a thumbnail. And so I just want something there besides a white blank screen. Right. So, mm -mm. uh, th thanks guys. Hi, little sister, Cheryl, newbie, Cheryl with a new name. <laughs> uh, hi, NYCA. Can't say, okay. Well, thanks for popping in. Oh, you liked the show yesterday. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. Talking when was the best part of the two. Yeah, yeah, we were cute. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. All right, so here's what I got. Let me show you. the. This is what I got at Books A Million. Um, Y'all know I've talked about Harry Potter and Game of Thrones, that I've not read any of the books or seen any of the movies or the, well, the TV series. Let's get this going. Let's get this straightened out here. Um, because I want to read the books before I see the shows. So I went ahead and got the first Game of Thrones to read. And again, I, I get the, I like to just be able to see it. I don't want it in the small versions. Cam's got the tiny little set, you know, little bitty books. Uh, no, can't see those. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't live, Prans. It was a recording. It wasn't live. Um, so I have to have it big enough to... I have to have it big enough to enjoy the reading, right? I mean, I can read tinier, tinier uh, font, but it's not enjoyable. So this one came in, um, let's lighten this up just a little. This one was um, a good size. So I just got this, I got the first one to try. And uh, again, I, I, I'm I still haven't started the Harry Potter one because I'm reading, um, I started the, um, Oh, what's his name? Um, sorry, guys, I got too many books in my head right now. <laughs> the uh, uh, hang on, let me go get it. <clears throat> Edward Gorey, I couldn't think of his name for a minute, so I'm reading Edward Gorey's biography. And uh, and the Lost City book. So I'm reading both of these. So I haven't got to Harry Potter yet. <clears throat> don't watch Game of Thrones. Is why I don't like Outlander. Yeah, I'm gonna read the book anyway. There's something different. Like I read all the Outlander books, and the violence wasn't. You know, it's just something about seeing the graphic violence rather than reading. I can read it, but I don't want to see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> And um, 
Yeah, it's because I didn't want to watch it till I read the book. I'm just that's the way I roll. <laughs> if there's a book about it, I want to see the read the books first. So I got the first Harry Potter and the first Game of Thrones to uh, read because I haven't watched any of the Harry Potter movies either. Right. I mean, I, of course, I see clips and preview. You know, you see it. You know, it's not like I've never like, oh, who's that little kid? You know, or anything like that. Of course, he's grown now. But um, <clears throat> and then I got the new watch revolution. This is my favorite watch magazine to use in collage. It's just got awesome larger uh, watches to cut up and use. And um, let me find some good ones here. See, like, you know, big ones like this. And sometimes there's even full pages. And then I had this little insert. See, like this. Look at, look at that. See how big that is? That's awesome. And I haven't even looked through this little insert here. It's got more. Like, look at this. This is just awesome collage fodder. So this book comes out like, um, is it every other month? Let's see. I forget. Okay, it's it's quarterly. This is the winter edition. So, um, yeah. So I got this for, for just, oh, look at that one. Oh, look at that one. Uh, just to cut up, you know. I do like to read some articles on if there's a history of clocks or watches or watchmakers or anything like that. I'll read those articles. But otherwise, it's just really a big ad. It's just like, you know, you're paying for a bunch of ads. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let's see. What's next? Okay, so then we went to um, Books A Million. I mean, uh, Barnes & Noble after we went saw the kids, you know, and did the uh, did the diamond painting with them. Then, um, then we went to um, Barnes and Noble. All right, I gotta fix. Let me fix my. I sit on this big fluffy cushiony, uh, fuzzy blanket. It's nice and soft, but it doesn't stay put. Okay, there we go. All right, so you know that me and Janet love our Louise McGill. Is it McGill? McGill Rias. I always call it Louise McGill. But it's McGill Rius, M I Q U E L R I U S. These, I think, I as far as I've ever seen, maybe you can get them on Amazon. I haven't looked on Amazon, but as far as in stores, the only book, the only store I've ever seen them in is Barnes and Noble. And my cl closer Barnes and Noble, when I went in and asked about it, they said, "What are you talking about?" They even looked it up in their computer and couldn't find it. I always find them up at Denise's Barnes and Noble. Amazon does have them, Terry. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much they are on Amazon, but at Barnes and Noble, the one Barnes and Noble that that in my area that has it, it they're ten dollars. They're nine ninety five. So worth ten dollars. And they're they're gridded paper. Okay, they're gridded. And it's just, it's just great. Um, it's thin. It's great for, I love it for note taking and doodling. So the one that Janet sent me, hi, Janet. Um, I am, I, I'm like, I, I work it out constantly. It's really full. I mean, she just sent it to me. I don't know how long ago, a couple of months ago. So I can go through, <laughs> I can go through one of these in a couple of months. Uh, along with, you know, travelers and different ones. This, I use these just like, oh, uh, it's just like, a, it's almost like a giant post-it note for me. I will write just everything in these. Uh, the one that Janet sent me, because I couldn't find one at my Barnes & Noble, I was using uh, mostly for my uh, storytelling, my Monk's Mail stories in. And as I still work on, I work on a lot of projects at once. And whether or not they ever come to fully, you know, whether I get a book published or not, the idea is that I'm working on it. And I love working on it. I love the process of things. <clears throat> I'm, I'm all about the, um, uh, you know, the, the process rather than the destination. I mean, I love the destinations too, but I love the processes. Uh, I, I love working on projects, sharing projects, inspiring you to start projects. And with all the different projects that I do, there's got to be one in there you like. <laughs> there's got to be something in there, right? Something, something. <laughs> Hi, Great. Hi, Magic. Hi, Becky. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some people. There's all my Kims. Got like four Kims in a row. <laughs> Hi, Shay. Anybody else I'm missing? 
All right. So I, I did get a new, I, I did get a new Miguel Reyes. Okay. And that, that's, like I said, I, Terry said you can get them on Amazon, but um, I, I get it at uh, the Barnes and, and they come in red, black, and blue. Those are the only colors I've ever seen them in. And it's like a kind of faux leather at leather at cover, you know, it's just like flexible. So it makes it good. You know, you can, they're just really, Oh, they just feel good. Don't they Janet? Don't you just want to love on them and hug them and pet them? <laughs> Uh, you love the process too, Diana. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Zero Gravity. Good to see you. Hi, Sharon. Anybody else I missed? Good morning. So I, I picked up another one of these. It was the last one, but they always have, seem to have one. They'll either have one red, one blue, or one black. And when, I, when I'm looking for one up at Denise's, my Barnes & Noble, they looked it up in their computer, couldn't find it, didn't know what I was talking about, never heard of it. So <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> all right. Then I got these two books. Let's see here. Why is it a little? Uh, well, it's okay. All right. So words, words to live by. This is a uh, pro, uh, uh, calm book. If y'all seen the P calm magazines, it's kind of like Flow. Flow has their magazines. Flow has their paper. But I haven't been able to find the new flow paper book of paper it's about this size and they and it hasn't been at books a million barns it hasn't been at, i haven't seen it at all in any of my stores and i could probably hunt it up on amazon but you know um i know that flow has a new one of those thick book of papers out um so that's what i was actually looking for and i couldn't find it but i came across this i i've bought a couple of the calm magazines before i, mean, I don't really I don't know. I don't relate to their articles. You know, y'all know I'm calm already, right? <laughs> I'm already calm. <laughs> Hi, Galena. Oh, I got to fix this blanket again. It's falling. Let me, let me, let me take a minute to do it right. here. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> I'm already calm. So, um, oh, the flow paper, 65. Oh, no, no, don't get it then, guys. It's totally not worth $65. Don't get the flow. I know a lot of it is probably, um, a lot of it is probably, I think I need that. I was holding my light like Janet's, like Janet's um, focus, you freak. <laughs> I think I need this for the focus, you freak. Uh, but anyway, um <laughs> Don't get that's not worth it's not worth that much money on Amazon. I think it's normally like twenty nine dollars, which is expensive anyway. But it's coming from uh, it's coming from is not not Norway. Is it Norway? Forget where it's coming from. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need a focus, you freak tag. Yes, I could use one, Janet. If you're willing to part with a focus, you freak tag, I'll take one. Hi, Deb. Dev's the one that um, he's the one that enabled me to get that that Western book for Hubster. Yeah. <laughs> Dev has always got if y'all want to be enabled with new color books, go to the modernist colorist. He will enable you. Um, hi, Lena, Wendy. Oh, good. Thank you, Janet. I would love one. A focus you free. Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Um, so, okay. So anyway, this one, Words to Live By, is is kind of like, it's kind of that flow. It's that type, right? It's that type. Okay. No, I don't have a Discord uh, print. I don't have time for an, another. Uh, I mean, I've signed up for it, but I don't, I don't do Discord. I don't have time. I do Instagram, Facebook, sort of do Facebook, uh, mostly YouTube. This is where I am. This, this is, this is it right here. <laughs> okay, so words to live by creative ideas and projects inspired by the power of words. Um, celebrate your uniqueness, connect with others, be kind to yourself. What drew me though to this was not even just the book, but the, they have projects in them and posters. Projects and posters, and that's what gets me in the flow paper uh, book as well. It is the projects and the posters, the little art posters. Those are the things that get me in. 
right? <laughs> you too, Louise? Yeah. So just look at this right here. Let me go ahead and, uh, well, I think that's zoomed in pretty good. Look at this right here. Just all these pencils. Now, you got to realize after I show the book, I will be cutting out the book. <laughs> just saying. I'll probably pick a couple articles to read and then it gets cut up. It gets used. It gets in a glue book or a glue magazine or a glue, you know, decorative something. So, um, yes, more name, of course, Wendy. <laughs> So these will all get these will all get cut out, right? These will get cut out and used in other projects. You know, my collage, my I mean, just look at this. Wouldn't this look like a cool fence? A cool fence in a collage, right? I mean, yeah. Okay, then it has uh, the different uh, uh, authors in here. And um, Lisa Condon, C-O-N-G-D-O-N. I always see, uh, she always pops up in uh, ads. If you, do you see her, um, her ads pop up a lot? I do. So I guess she has classes and um, different, you know, sells her art and anything, everything. Anyway, she's, um, she's uh, one of the contributors to this book. I'm typing in waiting, waiting. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it just happens, guys. On it happens on everybody's YouTube channel. There's always buffering when you uh when you stream in HD. It's just the way of it. So okay, so I'm back. All right. So make sure, guys, if if you um if you refreshed or anything, make sure you get uh, your wheel, go to your wheel, change your settings back to HD because sometimes YouTube will default you back to 144 and you will have crap video. Just saying. <laughs> so make sure you go into your little wheel now and make sure it's still in HD. Okay. So back to what I was saying, I just, I just said, you know, I just repeated that y'all were buffering and I was waiting. Um, so if you're on Instagram, you want me to follow you on Instagram. I don't follow guys that just, you know, you know, I don't know. I, I don't follow that. I follow art. I follow art, creativity. Uh, sometimes I'll follow, um, a pet channel. Like I follow, um, Misty and her dogs, but I don't follow, I don't follow private accounts unless I know you from here. If I know you, I'll follow you if you have a private account. Otherwise, I don't even, I don't follow private accounts. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you got on your channel. So I don't follow that. Okay. <laughs> Did I unfollow you? No, I, I didn't unfollow you on Instagram. No. Mm -mm. I still follow you. Now, that doesn't mean I see everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, feed. I mean, you know, I'm going to miss people. I usually scroll through. This is what I do when I go to Instagram. All right. So I go to Instagram here and I'll scroll through and I'll see what I like. Sometimes I'll comment like I love this right here. Um, Zeely liked that too. So I'll like that. That's coloring secrets. I'll like, sometimes I will leave a comment. I don't, whoops. I don't leave a comment on everybody, obviously, but I will scroll through for about 10 minutes. I'll scroll through Instagram about 10 minutes through two, about, probably about three times a day. So obviously I am going to miss people, <laughs> obviously. But, you know, when you have, let me see, how many followers do I have? I have 4,800, 4,820 followers. And if all of them post even once a day, there's just no way I'm going to catch everybody, right? And I don't expect everybody to catch mine either. <laughs> you know, because everybody else is following, you know. Okay, so let's get back to the uh, words to live by. Okay, and again, guys, if it starts buffering, just let me know and I'll stop, you know, stop what I'm doing to try to let y'all, uh, you know, catch up. Okay. All right. Oh, and by the way, speaking of Instagram, uh, or well, it's on Facebook too, but I found out on Instagram. If y'all follow Whoa Suzanne, Whoa Suzanne had her baby. So, yeah, just FYI, I thought I'd throw that out there. Okay, so here's Lisa Congdon, C-O-N-G-D-O-N. Not sure how you pronounce it, but um, you'll see ads of, of her art and stuff all the time. But look, look at this. This is why I bought this book, okay? This kind of thing in here. 
<laughs> hey, Julie. Happy Marvelous Monday to you, too. Did I say hi to you, May? I think so. Lisa's Coloring Corner. Thank you for stopping in. There's Mark. Hi, Mark. Scoob. I said hi to Scoobs. Hi, Ro. So I love these. I love these little posters. Okay, my camera is crooked. Let's straighten this up. Maybe straighten this baby up here. There we go. And um, see, look at this. Isn't this awesome? Aren't these awesome? And then here's a little article on what's in a word. And I haven't read these yet, guys. I haven't had a chance to read them. I've just browsed the book. So, um, and of course, I, I love words. I love uh, uh, entomology as opposed to etymology. No, let's see. Entomology is the bugs. Etymology is the words. I think I get that right. And I get them confused every time. But I love uh, the history of words. Uh, I love the study words, the history of words. I just love reading where they came from. And I have quite a few good books on them. I've given Cam a few of them because he does the same. He loves words too. So some of my uh, really nice uh, word books I've given to Cam because he'll I know he'll use them. Um, oh, okay. I will I will check it out. Rach, did you? Uh, we follow each other, I'm sure. Okay, so uh, running upon the, uh, so, you know, more word meanings, little posters, the power of yes. And now here's, the, here's the kind of things in this, this book and flow books. Look at this. It has a card stock pullout where you cut these out and you build, you'll build a, this, you build this three dimensional yes. So. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and then more posters and then, you know, other uh, other artists and other writers. And, uh, yeah, it's just a cool book. Very, very cool book. Here's where you can cut out. Um, there was some lettering here somewhere. Did I pass that? I thought it was in this. I think it's in this section anyway. <clears throat> Oh, here's uh, like word poetry where you cut the words out and make, you know, word, word fetty, word poetry out of magazine uh, words. Here's, you know, carving a stamp, which we've done here. Um, little word definitions, the definition of resilience. And these are these are the kind of things that I will cut out and put in my personal uh, my personal uh, journals. Right putting pen to paper, making little envelopes. See, this is the kind of thing that's also in flow. It's got little lines here that you can cut this out and fold into these little envelopes, uh, little um, word cards. Hi, Gilly. On the same page, some different books. Give some little book reviews. Oh, here's the one I was talking about. Cut it out. So look how they cut this out just to make the alphabet stand out like that. Isn't that cool? And so here's where um, it shows you, like, here's the back page. That's behind. This is what you'll make. You make that right there. So it makes it, like, half cut out, you know, with an X-Acto knife. You cut this out, and then it has the pink behind it. Very cool. I just like this stuff. Yeah, it's a neat little book. It's 20 bucks. Let me tell you, it's 20 bucks. Um, buy less, choose well, make it last. <laughs> and uh, then these people, here's some clothes, uh, clothing makers and designers, materials, uh, just, you know, how to care for your clothes. I mean, just all kind of thing. Mend your ways. Here's a, here's a section on sewing and, uh, you know, the artist that uh, does this. Do, do, do these projects here um here's a little hand sewn heart more little posters and quotes i love posters and quotes i just i'm a sucker for them i can't can't help it i'm a sucker for quotes <clears throat> uh and then here's make your own little paper cactuses cacti aren't these cute 
Cameron does has uh, he he I don't say he collects succulents, but that's his plant of choice. So he has uh, lots of plants, uh, succulent plants. Oh, it did kind of look like Sheldine, didn't she? A little bit. Um, she did look a little bit like Sheldine. This one here, a little bit. The other one, well, let's see what the other girl, maybe you met her. A couple of different girls. Yeah, must you must have met her. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, she does, uh, Sheldine does awesome pan pastels, although she's moved away from doing pan pastel tutorials and does her own paintings now. So, I, I got to be honest, I'm not really watching her anymore. Uh, since she moved away from pan pastels, because that's why I, I'm not, you know, that's just why I watched her. I watched her for the pan pastels. Okay, so then here's Word uh, word for the Senses, and it's a little booklet, which, you know, it's probably perforated. could probably tear it out. Um, and it's got different, it's not the whole alphabet, but it's got a lot of the alphabet um, with a definition. Like, here's Aurora. It's got a nice big A, the definition of Aurora. What was the one? Um, well, there was one I was flipping through, and I said something to Hubster, and I forget what he said. I'll have to try to remember what it was. But they're kind of offbeat words that you don't hear every day. And uh, and then it has a letter with it. I know Janet's going to like this because she and I both love, we both love our letters and words and definitions. So isn't that cool, guys? Look at that. It's got just different, uh, Quintrella, Quint, let's see, Quintrell, Quintrell. A woman who concerns herself with style and leisurely pursuits from the middle French word, which means vain. It's self-derived from the word clever. So clever and vain. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too, Terry. So yeah, that's uh, Quint Quintrell. Yeah. So yeah. So it's just stuff like that. You know, very, very, um, I don't know. I just love it. I like, yeah. Isn't it cool? And then it's just got, you know, random blank papers in there. Some poetry, things about poetry, an article on it. And then here are, um, let's see, what is this one? One to write, but not sure where to begin. Here are five simple tips to get you started. Read, find inspiration, get in the zone, break the rules, join a writing group. That's five. And the cat's under my feet there. <clears throat> I have the door open, letting them in. Yes, yes. Quintrell sounds better than vain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and anyway, um, <laughs> like here, she flicks her words like lit matches. They drop delicately, burning. Isn't that cool? See, stuff like that. I just love it. I love it. Um, so here's a little Maya, Maya Angelou uh, section and some of hers. And then it has just different uh, authors and their some of their words and some of their poetry. And I know y'all probably heard this before. In Japan, <clears throat> sorry guys. In Japan, broken objects are often repaired with gold. The flaw is seen as a unique piece of the object's history, which adds to its beauty. Consider this when you feel broken. Anyway, so there's little things like that. And I just love all the little posters. And uh, little words to live by. So anyway says to be continued, so I'm assuming there's going to be more of these words to live by. So, uh, yeah, so I thought I'd sh share that with you. Again, I got this at Barnes & Noble, and it's put out by the people that do the magazine. Magazine is called Calm, and it's a regular full-size magazine. This is a small book. It's, uh, <clears throat> it is like uh, nine and three quarters by seven and a half so yeah very cool so i gotta share that with you if y'all are interested in something like that now we're gonna get into some projects here just shortly guys i'm running out of pile room all right so i know janet i think zandra i'm trying to think of who else has this book there's a few few of the fibs and if y'all don't know what fibs are it's friends in the box there's a few fit um Fibs. Let me get my light there. I got a 
I got a uh, dark spot right there because of my piles next to me. All right. So I know there's a few of you that have this book and I got it for one reason. I got it because I bought the Artesia 96 real brush pens. Um, I have, I have a small set or, you know, like 36, I think that uh, Eileen, the enabler elf sent me the Kurataki real brush watercolor pen markers. Well, they're brush pens or brush pens. And uh, I've used them for probably about five years now. Eileen's not here right now, so I can't ask her, but um, I've used them probably about five years and some of them are run out. Some of them are getting low. So I said, well, uh, let me go ahead and try because everybody's talking about Artesia of uh, Dev. I think Dev has these. Dev bought them in the case. I had a separate case, but you can also buy them rather than in the plastic here. You can buy them in their special own case. And that's what Dev has. So if you want to see the case that these can come in, Dev has it in the case. Okay. I just bought the markers because I have a pencil case, right? So I just squeezed them into a pencil case. Hi, DP, Danya, anybody else? So uh, anyway, I see a lot of people, including Deb, using these Artesia. I see the ads on Facebook all the time. I succumbed to trying out some Artesia brand. I don't have their pencils. I don't have their paints or other things. Deb has a lot. I think Deb might have their whole line. I don't know. So if you want to see more um, use of the Artesia, besides what I'm going to do with these, then check out the Modernist Colorist. Or we say, instead of saying check out, we like to say peruse the awesomeness. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't have their watercolor pencils. I don't have any of that faithful. And, and the really the thing is, is I, I the only reason I got these is because I was running low on some of the Kuratakis. So I said, well, let me try these because they're like half the price, maybe a third of the price of Kuratakis. So I went ahead and got them just to test them out for you guys. I'm going to blame you guys. <laughs> Lena has their gouache and acrylic. Okay, thanks, Gina. I mean, uh, uh, Jean. Uh, Lena, Lena and Jean comes to Gina. <laughs> Jean said that Lena has their gouache and acrylic paints. <laughs> and uh, Louise says they seem to have very good products. <laughs> I'm just combining you. Yeah, I just made y'all uh, sisters there, uh, uh, Jean. <laughs> and Zeely says she has the brush pins and she likes them. Okay, so here's the thing. I have not tried them yet. I waited for you guys. I'm going to test them for the first time. Y'all know I love to do that kind of thing. I like to just work on the fly, see what happens, and we're going to go for it. Now, like I said, Deb has, he bought his in the case. It's a nice case, okay? I didn't need the case, but so I, and I think it's, you know, I'm obviously it's more expensive if you buy it in the case. And uh, anybody that wants uh, any mods or, you know, if you want to just, it's a, just look on Amazon. Just look up Artesia. You're going to find everything Artesia, right? Okay. So 96 real brush pens. And it comes in this case. I've already taken them out, as you can see. But they come in these trays. It comes in, how many trays are they? One, two, no, here's a little ASMR moment. One, two, three, six trays, I think. Six trays. And when they're full of pens, it's this thick right so it's really pretty in the box but i couldn't wait for that <laughs> i did save the packaging just to show you but now that i've shown you packaging all this is going to be uh yeah gone i don't i don't save this but i wanted y'all to see it okay i wanted y'all to see it all right so i put them in a pencil case and i love these btsky um uh bits was it what B-T-S-K-Y, this one, and I'll show you how they come when you order them. They have lots of little, they have like all these different zippers. You can zip it up. Now, I got to say, I will not be zipping it up. I could, yeah, it would probably be tough to zip this up anyway. I'm not carrying this anywhere, so I don't care if it zips up. But the pens are thicker than pencils. I did get them in here with a space between every third one. Um, so if you would rather have the actual case that you can buy for specifically for them, then go for it. But when you buy these BT Betsky cases, they come in these nice boxes. They always come in these nice boxes. This one is 168. I think you can get um, 90, 140. 
five or so. I mean, there's different different um, uh, size cases. Yeah, ASMR plastic moment. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you swatched yours out. They came out so vibrant. Okay, Louise. Well, we're going to test them out. Uh, <laughs> that's cute, Faithful. So anyway, uh, they come in these nice sturdy boxes. So if you need a nice sturdy box for anything, now I will probably keep this. It'll end up going in my uh, shipping closet. Uh, just because it's a good box if I did want to ship anything. Although most of the time, if I ship anything that has to be in a box like this, I put it in a priority box, you know, from the post office that you can get for free to mail, you know, priority in. But it is a good box. So uh, even if you cut the top off and just use the box itself. But I kind of like it with the pencils. So they do come in these nice boxes. Just FYI. All right, so this is the purple one, 100 and what did I say it was, 68, 168, and I only have 96 um, of the of the uh, markers, right, the brush pens, so, the, and it is, they are a little, I don't want to say they don't, they, they fit in here fine, the problem is the tops, you know, because these are thicker, these are thicker than pencils, oh, and it also does come with a brush pen, this came in the set, okay, Hi, Becca. The brush pen, which is the same Pentel brush pen that I use uh, all the time, it came in this set. So the problem is not that they don't, they're I mean, they're a little tight in the Kate thing here, which I don't mind because I want, I don't want them to move. But um, it's the caps. The caps are thicker, right? And so you can only squeeze in about three. You can see how they're starting to flare there. You can only squeeze in about three before the caps, you can't get any more in there because the caps are wider, right? So um, I would put three, skip one, three, skip one, three, skip one, then two was left. So I put them in here by um, like that. All right. And which is fine for me. It, it, you know, like I said, I'm not carrying this anywhere. I'm not zipping it up and taking it on any retreats or anything like that. But you can buy their specific uh, brand case. Um, there are a hundred on with the six. This is a hundred dollars, Jean. This or are you talking about your the, these? No, I didn't pay a hundred dollars for these. I think I got them for like 60. 62 or something like that with some of my birthday Amazon money. Um, do every other one. Um, I don't know. Then you'd be skipping. I think I'd skip too many and wouldn't have enough room, Marianne. Uh, if I did every other one. So half of 168, I guess it may work. What's half of 168? 84. Then I'd have 84 slots and there's 96 markers. So that wouldn't be enough markers. Okay. So uh, Terry said there's 69 on Amazon right now. Uh, the 50 cent is 60. The $10 coupon. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Jean. Okay. So, um... So I skipped every third one and they all fit. So you can see the colors. I'm going to let you kind of see the colors here. I, I don't know that I'm going to swatch them here today because that will take a lot of time to swatch them all. And I want to, I bought this book. I bought this book because I had these coming. Well, I already, I had them by the time I had, I bought the book this weekend. So I specifically bought this book to test these out in, okay? Um, okay. All right, so anyway, however you want to do it, whatever works for you. All right, so here's the colors there, and then here's the next set, the next um, batch here. I'm going to just hold the colors up so you can see the colors. Um, yes, I think the name, let's see. Uh, I think the color names are on them too. Well, I have, I'm going to look at them. We're going to explore these together. Yeah. Okay. Then there's the greens and the browns here and the grays. Okay. I can see the colors from the side here. I just want to make sure you guys saw all the colors. And so what I had, I had room for this, for my uh, real brush, my Kuratakis. So these are all my Kuratakis. And they all fit in here by doing 
every other one upside down. Okay. So flip one, flip the other way, back and forth, because the caps is what makes the, them not fit. Uh, you know, a whole row of them straight. The caps are so much thicker that you'll have to like flip them back and forth e e each way, right? So these are my real brush Kuratakis, okay? All right, so let's just pull one out here and let's see. Uh, yes, they're very, it, it is written on there and it's small as I can't read it without a magnifying glass. There's the name. There's the name of the, the color. Okay, so this one is pine green AT, no, A106. So I cannot read that without, I mean, I could, I could probably squint and sit, you know, really struggle to read that. Very tiny, um, very tiny. So uh, pine green A106. What a T, no, it's a one, A106. So that's what they look like. And I am going to compare it. I'm going to compare the, and I'll try to make sure I get one that's kind of, uh, that has good ink in it because some of these are not, you know, they don't have as, uh, the ink is running low on them. So let's just get a green here. So I'm going to get two greens. They're, they're similar there, right? Okay. So like this Kortaki is just called green. It has a number. Now, again, these are very high quality. The Kortakis are very high quality watercolor in a brush. You know, they're, and the artesians are supposed to be the budget friendly kind of version of it. So we're going to test them both. Okay. I like that. Jeez, how I did the artesian. Oh, okay, Connie. So, um, yeah, but if I, oh, okay. All right. So that's what we're going to do is I'm going to test these and I'm just going to get a little, um, uh, this right here. Let me, let me, let, let's go, let's go back here for a minute. Let's go to the book for a minute. Okay, so this is the book that I got, and I will zoom in one here. Let's make sure that the light, because we are going back and forth from white to color. Um, yeah, I could, Melody, but I just wanted to test. I wanted to test the artesians because a lot of people are getting them. So I just wanted to test them. So, yeah, so I thought it was a good time to test them. All right. So, um, well, I think I'm not sure on the Tombow. I have some Tombows too, Laura, uh, that I bought for brush lettering. I bought the uh, Tombows have, as far as I can tell, let's go ahead and get one Tombow out here too. They have a stiffer nib. Um, hang on, let's see. 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 Let's have it on the Michaels brand. Let's just go with, the, I'll just go with the red. <clears throat> so we'll test, we'll test, uh, I don't have a dark green in the Tombow. I have a dark red. So we'll go with that. So we'll test these three. Okay. All right. So let's get some, get a piece of, a couple pieces of cardstock. And we'll do that. We're going to go with this in just a minute. But right now, what I'm wanting to do, what I'm wanting to do is show you the book that I got to test these out in. Yes, they are, Jean. They are. Give me a minute, people. Just a minute, sassy pants. We'll get to it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's way too much trouble for me, Connie. I'm not refilling zigs. <laughs> that's just me. I'm not buying. I refill Copics, and that's about as far as I'm going to go with refilling. I'm not going to refill the Zigs. <laughs> that's okay. Jean goes, sorry, impatient student here. <laughs> I'm trying to squeeze this all in in one show, guys. Okay, so this is Watercolor with Me in the Forest, Dana Fox. So who else besides Zandra, Janet, who else has this book? I know there's quite a few of you that have this book. Oh my gosh, I need to go get some coffee. <laughs> okay, Jean, Jean, you have it? Okay, yeah, that's right. You do. I saw you had that. Um, uh, does May, May has it? May said it's her favorite watercolor book for beginners. All right, who else? Fess up, people, fess up. <laughs> uh, Gilly said, Jean to the principal's office. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, you girls. Oh, okay. May said that she and Melody have it. Okay. Now, the second question is, Louise has it. Okay. Eileen. Hi, Eileen. We were talking about you a minute ago. Eileen has it. Who else? All right. Let me, let me get a couple more people that say they have it. Okay. Who else has it? <laughs> Welcome back, Terry. <laughs> Y'all know what the next question is? The next question is, how many of you have done something from it? All right. How many of you have actually worked out of it? I'm assuming May probably has. Okay. And Melody has not. Jean has not. <laughs> I know you girls do well. <laughs> Patricia says she needs to get it. Eileen goes, oh, no. She goes, oh, no, LOL. Oh, no. Like, uh, uh, use it? <laughs> oh, Eileen. Okay, uh, newbie Cheryl, little sister Cheryl says she has it. Have you used it, Cheryl? Yes, Cricket. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Let me go over here. Wait a minute. <laughs> see if I can find it on the fly. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. All right, so how many people have used it? And the answer is... <laughs> you lied, Melody. You replied before I answered. Zeely says, um, how, color how, how many color books that I've not colored in? You'd be surprised, Zeely. I have probably very few I haven't colored at least one page. There's a few. There's some I have not colored one page in. Zeely's trying to call me out. Girl! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So, uh... <laughs> Okay, so Becca at the Art Spirit has it and works on her channel. Okay, thank you, Faithful. We have somebody. <laughs> yes, Ely. <laughs> oh, girl. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> Wait, <see, Lee. laughs> Uh, where, where is it? Um, is this the one? <laughs> okay, am I, am I, um. <laughs> Am I uh, buffering? Okay, so I'm buffering. So I'm waiting. Okay, waiting. Waiting. <laughs> we'll go through the book as soon as they say I'm done. Okay, I'm back already. Okay, hi, hi Laura. Bye. Did I say good morning to you, Laura? Okay, I'm back. That was, a, that was a quick trip by Buff. Buff came in and left. Okay. And the, the paper in this book is kind of... Um, you know, it's got that kind of watercolory texture to it. I'm not going to work in the book. Um, my plan was to sketch some of these out. I was going to pre-sketch them out. That was going to be my second video that I did over the weekend that was just recorded. But um, my first video was the, the if y'all missed it earlier today. And thanks, guys, for all the thumbs up and everybody here. I did a video on the coloring special effects. Uh, I will post that tomorrow. It will lead up to the Wednesday show. We are going to work in this book on Wednesday. So FYI, I'm going to post a, a just an hour recording tomorrow about so pre pre sketching for Wednesday. Okay, but I didn't get to do uh, I didn't get to do that with this book, which is what I had planned to is pre sketch some of these out. But Hubster and I did our Western instead. So, <laughs> so we did our, um, we did the Western video instead of uh, pre-sketching in this one. So what the, what the, what this book has is, well, here's the projects and they're very step-by-step, -step, very step out. Hi, Jennifer. I'm sure I'm missing some people. Thanks, everybody. So there's wet on dry, wet on wet, painting fur, ink and wash. And then they have different projects under each one, right? 
And the paper is kind of, it has that feel of watercolor paper to it. But I'm not going to work on this. I will work uh, on a separate watercolor paper, okay? Which uh, uh, I hope I pulled that out. <laughs> I'm not going to work in the book, all right? But I, she's made it for the purpose that you can work actually in the book. So here's some test here. Uh, light, lightest, dark, darkest. And we'll do a couple of these tests here with these. We're going to do a test with this. And with, well, I have my other watercolor brush. It's, the, it's pretty much the same ones that came in the kit. So what my plan is, is to use these brushes, um, particularly the artesian, but we're going to compare. And what I want to do is let me get my uh, little porcelain tray here. Hang on. And my water. My water spray <clears throat> and I'll clean off a spot in my what here uh, in my tray to use this is all water-based stuff and so I can clean this out and what I'm going to do is use the brushes I'll do test as well with just straight on uh, full opacity of them and then I'm but I'm going to use them to do the projects by painting in the tray and picking them up with the watercolor brush okay there's a reason the watercolor brush came in with these artesians okay so we'll do that all right so we'll do that testing oh thanks Connie <laughs> and thanks everybody that left a comment on that video as well okay so we'll do some tests on this and we'll do a little bit of reading obviously I'm not going to read every chapter everything here but I really do want to do the uh, acorns this this was my uh, one of my favorites in here was the acorns so you can see how she has lightly drawn the acorns for you so that you can work actually in the book and it has a little bit of texture I don't know you know, the quality of working in this book at all. I've not done anything in the book. I don't plan on doing it in the book. I'm going to do it on watercolor paper. Okay. But I will also just do a test with the, with the pens on just some, you know, smooth card stock as well. So we'll do a couple of different swatch tests. Uh, Tommy so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Patricia. I like that they list the colors. Oh, the co what colors to use? Yeah, Melody. Yeah, it's a it's a tutorial book, guys. It is a tutorial. Yeah, Sister Cheryl is newbie Cheryl. She changed her name to a real name. <laughs> I didn't know that. She had to email me and tell me. Okay, so like uh, yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt umber, right? And uh, now don't be thrown off necessarily if you have different markers or watercolors, neo colors. Uh, whatever you have, don't think that you have to have something that says yellow ochre, okay, raw umber. Look at your colors, do some testing, and see what color matches this. If you want to go by her color chart, um, I mean, those are standard names, uh, burnt umber, raw umber, yellow ochre are standard names, but also realize, guys, when people make these products, they want them to be, you know, pine green, rosy red, you know, um, uh, festive yellow, right? They're going to call them, they could, they might call them actual names, but more likely than not, a lot of products, like look at a box of Crayolas, right? Your box of Crayolas, the, the yellow ochre is probably going to be called, I don't remember now, it's been a while since I read my Crayola color names, but they're going to be different, right? Barf Brown, <laughs> Zeely. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't I can't help myself here, guys. Barf brown. <laughs> yeah, goldenrod. Yeah, yeah, Laura, goldenrod. So they're gonna call them different. Uh yeah, and that's why a swatch is useful. That is true. That is true, Jean. You should swatch out. And I gotta tell you guys, I have swatched out all my supplies at one time or another in different, and I have some in a travelers, I have some in uh, you know, this book, that book. I have a, I haven't swatched out now. I haven't swatched out my these new ones yet, right? But you know, I swatch them out all over the place just whatever book I'm working in at that time. And I really do need to do a complete swatch, but maybe that's what I should do with, uh, hmm, let me see. Let me 
need to make some space here. Maybe that's what I should do. I, I bought these for writing in. I bought these uh, Fabriano um, uh, gr dotted grid. And I know it's probably not going to show up. Dotted grid journals. I bought these at Blick uh, with my birthday for my birthday when we went last week before last. And I bought them for writing. But maybe I should use one for all swatching. Hmm. Maybe I should re-swatch everything. Okay, we're going to do that. We're just going to swatch all my supplies today. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you have one. Uh, yeah, in lime green, Gene. Yeah, they had them in red, lime green. I think that orange. I just got the gray. I just got the gray. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true, Eileen. Eileen, the enabler elf says, if you swatch them, you can honestly say you use them. <laughs> You'd watch it, Carol. And hi, Carol, by the way. Uh, I won't go back and just use swatches in the book. I never do. Yeah. Well, if you had them all in one book, though, Janet, if you had um, a beast, what? and that's what Janet and I call our Miguel Rios, Rios uh, books, the beast. <laughs> if you swatched them all in a beast, Janet, would you go back? I don't know. I'm, you might. You might be more likely to. Hi, Nick and Tina. Okay, so I kind of want to do the acorn. And again, every project has it lightly sketched out on the side here. The caterpillar, again, can you barely see it there? And and you want to, if you're going to sketch anything out for watercolor, you're going to want to do it very lightly so that the lines aren't showing. Uh, now, obviously, when she gets back to her section on ink wash, she talks about using ink lines in that, right? <laughs> so the caterpillar, a fern, and again, very lightly sketched out over here. Ladybug, clover, flowers, monarch butterfly, a tree, a moth, and see how many, she only keeps it to a very few colors. <clears throat> Janet makes little swatch rings of colors. But does she swatch them all out? If you swatch it, we will come. <laughs> oh, faithful. Oh, my gosh, you girls. And by the way, Janet comes on after me at one. Um, I usually don't stream till one. I stream about three hours and then Janet comes on it. You know, you, you have a lunch break and then Janet comes on at one. Uh, so, and then Jean, Jean, are you streaming today at four? Um, Jean, are you coming on at four? I really do like you know, the little tags on the little, yeah, Janet did little, uh, tags. She do, has done little tags of her inks. I don't think, did, did you, did you, did you do them of your Neo colors? I don't remember, Janet, if you uh, did ta little color tags. You need to show those. Okay, you'll show them today? Okay. Janet says she'll show them today on her stream. So that's Janet M. Young on YouTube. Um, going, okay, and Jean is going to continue with her watercolor marbles at four. So the musical scrapper is doing a watercolor, continuing her watercolor marble painting because Jean has lost all her marbles. <laughs> So she's going to do her watercolor uh, marbles at four East, uh, Eastern. All these are Eastern times. Uh, <laughs> hey, Dot. Let's see. Um, okay. So, okay, G, you've lost your marbles. Okay. And <laughs> so then there's some mushrooms. And again, see how it's lightly done here? Cabin. And see, look, very few colors. This is a beginner's, like May said, it's a, a great beginner's guide to watercolor. And I got it to test, to test my uh, artesians on. A chickadee, some feathers, maple leaf, snail. And every page is tinted. Like, see how this has an orange tint to it? This one has a green tint. There, It's just a beautiful book. It's beautiful eye candy. You know, so Eileen, even if you never use the book, you will look at it and, and ooh and ah, I know. <laughs> Snail, uh, hummingbird, bluebird. See, very simple, very simple little things. They're so adorbs. Little turtle, a squirrel, leaves. 
wild roses, daisies, a trout. And then here she has a section on painting fur. Um, I will take her that long to find them. Her oh, Jean, yeah, Connie. And so here's a little try it page, right? So she's got a little base of uh, a little base color, flat color. Then she started with a few mid tone, mid tone first strokes, and then dark first strokes. So it's, if if you really want to start getting watercolor, never picked up a watercolor brush or tried anything like this, then you know give it a try. I just happen to be going to do it with my brush markers, but you know, you can use your regular watercolors, your Neo colors with your brush pen, you know, anything water, water soluble. You could use your watercolor pencils, you know, anything. The hedgehog. Oh, I do like the hedgehog. That may be a second choice. Uh, the bumblebee, a bear, a skunk, a chipmunk. So you get a lot of little projects in here. A fawn, raccoon, rabbit, coyote, a beaver, a fox. See how many pages you get? Then you get into the ink and wash. And here she talks about making sure that you use a waterproof pen, like a Micron. She recommends the Micron Pigma. Um, so, you know, you want a waterproof pen. And so what she does on these is she gives you a light pencil to go over with the pen. Right, so this is ink and wash, and if uh, if you want more advanced ink and wash, Nina, what's her name? Wait a minute, let me kind of grab. I didn't come prepared to grab this book off the shelf. Here it is. Uh, and there's uh, Claudia Nice. Claudia Nice. I keep wanting to say Nina every time I think of this book, but Claudia Nice does. Um, uh, there's a few different books that she has on pen and ink. So if you want to do pen and watercolor, you can, you know, use this kind of uh, more in depth for that, right? But I just wanted to show you that, that there's other options for more advanced uh, pen and ink and pen and watercolor. Uh, do you know, I'm working in the ink house while I'm listening to you. My husband loves this. Book. I love that book too. And I want to get back to it. Ink house is one of those books I want to complete, uh, completely fill finish for end to end. Okay. Uh, you're going to use alcohol inks today, uh, Janet. I just saw that go by and Eileen's going to make her. <laughs> okay. So Jean said, the only complaint I have about this book is the drawings should be on the other side of the page because it sits flatter. Ah, so if you're going to work on, yeah, I see what you're saying. Working over here on this page, you'd rather have it. Yeah. And I know I totally agree that that would be handier for us, the, the person doing it, but it just looks better when it's like this in a book. So, and I'm not going to use this anyway. I'm going to sketch it out myself. So, um, you know, that's not going to matter to me. I was going to do, I was going to sketch all these out before I was going to do a separate like hour long video where I just sketched them, but I didn't get time because Hubster and I did our Western uh, video instead. But I did do that. I did start sketching uh, for about an hour. I did sketch out in the uh, colorist um, te techniques. What is it called? The colorist two. This one. <clears throat> I'll give you all a little preview here. This is what we're going to do on Wednesday. And I'm going to upload a video tomorrow where I did a bunch of the sketches. Um, I only did an hour's worth, which is quite a few, but it wasn't as many as I wanted. And I'd, I'd really like to make another video, like a part two, where I sketch the rest of them. But I didn't have time. Didn't have time. Um, hey, Miss Vicky B. Yes, how are you and the and the chillins doing? How they doing? Miss Vicky? Oh, I love seeing your okay, wait, gotta go to Instagram real quick. Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky. And I know somebody's gonna leave me a complaint saying, stop calling everybody out. Well, that's what we do here. That's what we do here. We call people out. <laughs> Make I uh, really don't make any apologies for it. Okay, so wait. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, here's one. This is this is a cute one, Miss Vicky. So if y'all need to follow Miss Vicky B, 
she has awesome art. Here's let me show you her newest. Uh, here's a picture. Look, aren't y'all tempted to go see what she's got on Instagram? <laughs> Uh, Janet would love to see these books. It's kind of like this is Miss Vicky B's Beast. Beast mode. <laughs> Julie says, Dee, I was cracking up when you were trying to figure out why. So oh, yeah, I know. Everybody told me. I know, Julie. We got our answer. We got our answer from about three or four people on. Uh, see, now that's a good comment to me. The Sam, you know, why Sam Elliott was in the bowling alley comment. Those are productive comments. Not, you know, <laughs> uh, I we think, yeah. And Hubster goes, oh, yeah. I think our head was just in, you know, the Western mode. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And he did correct a couple other things like um, the he got the first. There was two women back to back in the book. And uh, he said that the second one was the, the sister in Psycho, but it was actually the first one of those two women was in Psycho. He goes, oh, I got those confused. I said, that's okay, honey. Someone will get corrected. <laughs> yeah, uh, two or three people did, Connie. Yeah, two or three people. Um, okay, so Dragonfly, let me just keep going here. Uh, mountain, oh, oh. So anyway, let's go back to Ink and Wash. So, um, also called line and wash, process of sketching out your subject in ink before applying quick and light washes of color. And you can do it both ways. You could also do the flowers like in a watercolor first and then do the ink on top. But you do want to make sure you have a waterproof ink. And if you do the ink on top of watercolor, that the watercolor is dry before you put ink on top. Otherwise, it'll feather. Even if it's a waterproof ink, if the watercolor is wet and you go on top of it with ink, the ink will spread. So if you're going to, you could draw it first and let make sure the ink is dry, like with the Micron Pigma ink, you know, and make sure it's dry before you add the watercolor. Okay, Pentor. I mean, uh, Dot. Thanks, Dot. Have a good day. So here's some samples of ones with uh, ink, right? Drawing, drawing them out in ink and then uh, watercolor washing on top of it. So, yeah. See how many projects are there? There's just so many. The book has really got, I don't even know. I, had, I didn't even see how many. There's probably a number in there of how many projects are in the book and they are uh, she does uh, talk them out they're not step outs in the sense of little pictures for each thing but it's got step-by-step -step instructions right and she has a here's her watercolors that um watercolor dash workshop.com and uh for her uh official online wor watercolor workshop watercolor-workshop.com so if you want to um you want to go uh, peruse the awesomeness of dana fox okay and this book was 22.99 it might be cheaper on amazon okay so but just fyi that's what it is at the bookstore okay so now let's do some testing let me get my watercolor i have a little paddle we can also use I thought I pulled it out and I didn't. Where is it? Okay. So I got these little uh, watercolor pads. The, all the time at uh, Hobby Lobby, <clears throat> Master's Touch, which is the Hobby Lobby brand, they go on sale for 50% off all the time. Oh, May said Dana's coming out with a new book in the fall, Sea Life. Okay. Thanks, May. Thank you. Yeah, the book is quite, look, it's quite, you know, quite thick there. It's a, it's a, it's a good size book. And, um, okay, so I just got this, you know, I don't do a lot of watercolor, as y'all know. Um, I, I actually got these to use in my color books, right? <clears throat> but we're going to test it on watercolor paper because it's a watercolor book, watercolor paper. I am going to test the markers and everything on just flat uh, cardstock. <clears throat> I've got to go get some hot coffee, guys. Hang on. I'm losing my voice. Hang on. I'll be right back. <clears throat>
And I have my door open. I'm so surprised the cats aren't in here. Must be sleepy today or something. Probably don't know that the chat's buffering. And that means that they can't hear me. It's just buffering. <laughs> Jean goes, enjoy your coffee while you're waiting. <laughs> okay, seems like I'm back. Okay, I'm back. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I, I try to wait for you guys. <laughs> I just talk because I know it doesn't show up on the recording. Okay, so what I was saying on these um, Master's Touch watercolor pads, which you, is normally $3.99. You can get it for $2 bucks, um, when it's, everything's 50% off on the, the Master's Touch brand. But any kind of, you know, I just like smoother watercolor. I know Jean likes cold press. This side feels more like cold press. The back side feels more like hot press, and that's the side we're going to use. Okay, so this is where I'm going to do the acorns on. That being said, I'm also going to get another one out to test. This will be our uh, test um, for the, you know, swatch, like little mini swatching. Okay, mini swatching. I'm not going to do full-on swatches of all of them. And then I'm also going to swatch it on and test it on just smooth uh, 110, I think it's 110, might be 90, uh, smooth cardstock. Because when I'm using these, what I'm going to be using them for is in the color books, right? So we'll have two different kind of papers here to test them on. I'm also going to be using them as like watercolor. So let me get, uh, let me clean out a little bit of a tray here with some baby wipes. Just need a little bit of an area here. Might take a couple cleanings because there's a lot in here <clears throat> okay just to have a clean area to use the markers in okay now let me dry that i'll dry it with a couple of kleenex just so i should probably just clean the whole thing out but whatever <laughs> okay <clears throat> yeah i know uh little sister youtube well um, newbie Cheryl, uh, YouTube will a lot of times will uh, default you back. So you need to check your HD settings after uh, after a uh, buffering or if you refresh. Okay, so the first thing before we do this, let's go ahead. I'm going to set this aside for a moment so that we can do a little testing on the two different because Jean, I know Jean can't stand it. Uh, um, so here's the watercolor and here's the just the smooth cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the artesian, the artesia, sorry, artesia, A-R-T-E-Z-A. And it's called a real brush pin. This one's pine green. And let's go ahead and try to zoom in just one more. So maybe two. Okay. I don't want to lose our clarity, but I want you to be able to see it. All right, so I'm going to try a couple different things. I'm going to try it directly onto paper, okay? Oh, let me show you. Let's show you first each of the pins. Now, just because they may look similar doesn't mean that they're going to be the same firmness, right? So the Artesia is a little bit longer, okay? We're going to go Artesia, Kurataki, Tombow, okay? We're going to do each one. So the Artesia has a longer brush. The Kurataki has a shorter brush, brush, which means you're going to have more control. You're going to have more control with the shorter brush. The Tombow is it's more stiff. I already know that from using that and using this one. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do some testing. All right, so the Artesia, let's start with just on plain cardstock. Okay, so here's the green Artesia, like kind of on its side, right? There's kind of on its side there. Um, like, you know, if it's a watercolor brush, I'm going to kind of flick it and thin it. Then you can do, you know, the lines. You can push harder and smoother and thinner and fatter. Okay, so and the color's real nice. It works really nice like this. If you're coloring something in on the side like that, you're going to have, you know, the different 
feathering like that because you're using it's a real brush, right? Yeah, um, Jean is saying the Tombow is a felt tip in a brush shape. Whereas these, the Kurataki and the Arteza, Arteza are real brushes, okay? All right, so here we go. I'm just going to kind of, you can see how thin you can get it. I'm trying to get it as thin as I can. So if you're going to use this, let's just say in a color book, and I probably should pull out a color book page to test. If you're going to use it in a color book page, um, you're going to, it's not going to be, you see how you can see the, the lines. Okay. Now here's the other way we're going to test it. We're going to put it in a tray. Okay. And we're going to pick it up with the water brush. Well, let's get my water brush going here. <clears throat> Okay, so you can, if you want it as a wa real watercolor like, then you can use the uh, with the brush. Now, it does make it a different lighter color, as you can see. Okay, so, well, I think it's going to depend on the paper too. Nick and Tina said they tried it on a Hannah Lynn book and didn't like it. Uh, I think it's, a lot of it's going to depend on the paper. That's why we're going to try it on two different papers here, okay? All right, so now let's go back over here on the watercolor paper. All right, so I'm going to kind of do a like a side thing where it kind of makes the brush flare because it is a brush, right? So it's going to flare. And I, you can get a nice solid color like that, or if you do a kind of a sketchy, scratchy, so you can do both, okay? All right, and then again, we'll do um, thin and thick lines here. This is on the watercolor paper, the thin, which, you know, it's got a little bit of a texture to it. So it's going to want to drag a little more and soak up a little more on the watercolor paper. Okay, let me make some notes here so we can see. Let me get a pen here. <clears throat> okay, so this is smooth cardstock. And this is, I'm going to call it hot pressed watercolor. Okay, because the backside is smoother than the front. Okay, so now here we go. This is the Arteza brush. Okay. All right. All right. And this is, um, this one is full strength. This is watered down. Okay. This is full strength. And now I'm going to do one watered down. Okay, add another layer, make it darker. And of course, as that dries, you could add another layer because, you know, and it's just like watercolor. You can just add more color to it, right? All right, let's make sure I get all my caps where I'm going here. Okay. All right, so let's just take a moment. Try to get it all in camera here. I might be too zoomed in. Can y'all see it okay? Any questions so far on this? Okay, this is the Artesia brush. I'm going to do the same thing with the other two. Okay, thanks, Terry. All right, so now let's put the Artesian. Oh, wait, this is the. Let me get them all. I got all my caps sitting here. Okay, that goes there. This is red. I got. Uh, I don't have a dark green in the Tombow, so we're going to use red. But let's do the uh, let's do the Kurataki next. Okay. Now let me clean out my little tray here. Okay. Now okay. So now we're going to use the zig. Kuratake real brush. 
Okay. And I, I want to have room down here for the Tombow, too. Then down here, we'll do the Tombow. All right. Now we've got our little charts. Can you move the full around with the... Yeah, we're going to try that, too. Hang on. Hang on. We're going to try to try it all. <laughs> you probably can on here. Probably not on the cardstock. Okay, so the question was, can you move will the will the um pigment move after it's on the on a, on something without being watered down in the tray so i'm uh, guessing they'll both move but probably better so on the watercolor paper where you could actually use it more uh let's see what happens over here on the oh let me put my okay so here we go Okay, so here it is on cardstock. Okay, there it is on cardstock. Now remember, it's it's sat here for a minute. It's sat here for a minute. Let's go ahead and try it directly. Let's put it on and then go directly with the water. It's pretty much the same. Okay, so there it is, dry and then into wet. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it, it soaks right into the uh, uh, the cardstock. Let's try it on the watercolor paper. Okay, so let's go up here and just see about moving it. See, look how good it works on the watercolor paper. You can actually make it meld out, melt out. Okay, now I am getting a little bit of peeling, but that's the paper. Okay, all right. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and put some on and immediately go in. Yeah. So if you go immediately, the watercolor paper, it's just going to work better, right? Here's the watercolor paper. Here it is on cardstock. So when you go to use this in a color book, your color book paper is going to be more like this cardstock, right? So you're going to have to remember that. It's not going to do this probably on any unless it's a watercolor, color, watercolor paper color book, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, the paper is always a difference. That's why I always say in whatever color book you're using, always test. I don't care what medium you're using. Find a scratch page in the back of your color book and test, especially if you're doing some specialty medium, you know, something other than pencils. But even your pencils are all going to act differently on different paper. Okay, so there we go. So that is the Artesia. Now, let me clean off my little brush here. And let's go to the Kuretake, the Zig Real Brush. All right, now let's do all the same tests. I got to back up one, guys, because I'm sliding back and forth because I'm not fitting in. I'm not fitting in the... There we go. There we go. I want, I want both pieces to fit. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it depends on the paper. It depends on the medium. And it depends on, like, this is smooth cardstock. This is watercolor paper, made for watercolor, right? All right, so let's go ahead and do the zig. Okay, so here is, and remember, the brush on this one is smaller. See how small it is? So because the brush is smaller, you are going to have more control with it. You know, the thickness and thinness of it, you're going to have more control. Okay, so let's put it over here on the watercolor paper. Now, of course, on the watercolor paper, you can lift it, the brush just a little and you can get more. Uh, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm making it sketchy like that, okay, by lifting up the brush. But when you just do a solid brush like that, okay. All right, now let's go ahead and um, let's do a little while it's wet. While it's wet on the cardstock. While it's wet on the watercolor paper, they both kind of do the same thing. Okay, so there's your comparison with that. Oh, I know, I love, I love them too, Eileen. Is you know, I, I just some of mine were running out, and I said, well, I'm just going to go ahead and test the Artesia because more people are buying the Artesia, 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 and uh, and they're less expensive, so I wanted just to test them. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and put some in the tray. Okay, put some in the tray and then let's do a little bit of water here and let's test the color. Okay, still, it does still change the color, right? It lightens up because, you know, you're adding water to it, of course. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. Now let's wet the places that we did initially. Okay, so let's do a little rub out, trying to rub it out while it's dry. Okay, and rub it out while it's dry on the watercolor paper. Okay. Obviously it works, all, both of these pens are working better on the watercolor paper than they are on the cardstock, right? Because they are watercolory, right? They're, uh, I'm not sure if Arteza is actual, it's, it's a real brush pen, but I don't know if that's real watercolor, right? I don't know if anybody else knows. The Kurataki is actual watercolor in a pen, right? They're both reacting very similarly. <laughs> They're uh, reacting very similarly on the, the respective papers. Okay. Cardstock, watercolor paper. See, they're very similar. Yeah, they do. They're working really nice, great on the watercolor paper. But because a lot of us do our, you know, we're going to use them in um, color books. Probably the best way to use them in a color book is either flat out, just get a solid color by going over and over it, you know, get you a nice solid color, right? Or doing where you put it in the tray and use it like this, right? Use it as you know, like a, a wash, like a background. And then you could go over this with your pencil, right? Is that, does everybody, are we all on the same two pages? <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for the thumbs up. Thanks everybody for being here. Got a good crowd today. We have right now, we have 170 people here. Thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate it. We're on the same pages? Okay. So now we've tried the Arteza, the Zig on cardstock, just smooth cardstock, and on hot press watercolor. Now let's try the Tombow, which, um, like Jean said, it's like a felt tip, a felt tip in a brush shape, right? It's not really a real brush. It's a felt tip, like a marker. It's like a marker tip in a brush shape. The difference is, is see this, this, I'm going to go ahead and get my finger in it. This will not separate. This is not a brush. It is a marker, right? Whereas both of these are brushes where, look, let's see if I can get it to show you. See how it separates? Look, see how it separates like a brush? Ah, oh, let me put that down. See how these are brush tips. Okay. as opposed to a hard marker tip. Now, that being said, I can tell you these are going to be better for doing brush lettering. Where's my... Let me get my... Uh, let me clean my hands off here. <clears throat> the, the firmer tip, and I'll have to get my scrubby out, my craft scrubby to get this off my hands, but I wanted you all to see. I wanted you to see that... It, uh, is a real brush as opposed to, yeah, bristles versus felt tip, right. But I'm going to test the water, waterness of this now. Okay, let me clean out my little tray here. All right, so here we go. Here is the Tombow. This is red. Oh, what's it called? It's, uh, I don't think they, do they have a name on them? It just has a number, 755. It's kind of like a rosy, kind of a rosy, pinky red. Okay, it's more magenta, I should say. So there's the Tombow. And of course, you can get that as thin. And you can, you can write with this, like um, push hard and thin, 
well, I'm not doing it very well here on this, but you can do, uh, let, you know, brush lettering with this, okay? Whereas these are going to be floppy. These are going to be floppy. You could do it. You could do brush lettering with it, but you're going to have to have a little more skill. The brush, the, if you use a Tombow, it's a stiffer, you know, marker nib, and it's easier to do, although I didn't do that very neatly. Okay. All right. So now let's put some down here and you get a nice flat, even color, nice flat, even color with the Tombow. Now let's get the water brush here. Let's make sure it's clean. All right. So let's move that around. And obviously on the watercolor paper, it smooths out. All right. Now let's put some out on the, ooh, because it's a marker. <laughs> it's making a noise. All right, so now we're going to pick this up. And you got, you can water it down, right? Bye, Zeely. Thank you for being here. All right. All right, so the Tombow it's a nice flat color because it's it's a marker. It's a marker. It's not a brush. I can't this feather this right here unless it's running out of ink. You're not going to get this. You're not going to be able to do any of that kind of thing, right? Because it's a flat marker. Say it's a flat color, but they're nice. Don't get me wrong. I love them. I'm, I use them for the brush lettering when we get around to doing it. Just saying. All right. So there we go. Let's clean my, and I, to clean out my water brush, I just squeeze water out of it into a Kleenex. That just seems to work the best. A Kleenex just pulls the pigment right off of your brush pen. All right. Any questions? Do we have any questions? So I'm not going to be using, I'm not going to use the uh, Tombow um, or my, today I want to just use the, um, the Artesia on a piece of watercolor paper, sketching out, sketching out a project from in the forest. That's what we're going to do today. Okay. We're going to use a piece of watercolor paper and do that. Okay, good. I'm glad y'all like the comparison. So as far as the difference between them, I can't say is... The Kurataki more light fast. I can't talk about the permanency of it. None of that. Right. If y'all, you will have to do more in-depth research if you plan on if you want to know that information. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is true watercolor as to just some pigment watered down. I don't know. I'm just doing paper comparisons. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a green to compare because I wanted to try to do them all the same color, but I didn't have a green in the Tombow. Um, so you can get the Tombow to feather on cold press with a very light touch. Okay, well, the cold press is more on this side. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, a light touch. Okay. Um, it kind of does feather a little bit, but look at the ends of it. Look how it like blunts. It, it blunt ends, you know. Um, I don't know that I could get it any other way. But this is this is more a uh, hot press. I mean cold press. This is hot press here. Okay. How much of each should we buy? <laughs> Eileen, you don't need any. Eileen, you already have your Kurataki. OK, here's what I like about the Kurataki is the brush tip is tinier, tinier for little details. OK, it's I mean, you can still point, you know, use a point of this one, too. Uh, you just have to be more conscious not to push down as hard because um, you're going to get more thickness of line. You know what I mean? You can get both thin. I thought we did both. All right, here, let's do that. Let's do a thin line here. I'm going to try to do the thinnest line I possibly can. This is with the Kurataki. And this is on cardstock, right? 
Now let me see if how thin of line I can get with the Arteza. Yeah, I can get about the same, but I'm very conscious of how um, how uh, long the bristles are. So you can you can do both. Okay. Now be gentle. You have both, Eileen. You have the brush. You have the Arteza and oh, you have the brush markers and the Tombos. Yeah. Almost have my diamond painting like you and, and it have. Oh, the uh, pa uh, pastel girl, Connie. I like that pastel girl. Hi, Cam. Dozed out. Pain management is the only thing that them. Oh, well, uh, thanks for stopping in. Sleep with, as you will, as you need to, Cam. We don't mind nappers. We lurkers and nappers are all welcome. Right, Jean? <laughs> What does everyone think of the pit pens? You mean the pit, the black pit brush? Oh, or just any color. All right. They're waterproof. Here's the thing about pit pens. The pit pens, I don't really use them. I gave all my colors to Cameron, my grandson. I still have some black pit pens because I use the black pit pens. They're waterproof. They're, that's the difference. Okay. The pit pins are waterproof. Well, I, I'm sure if I scrubbed them, they'd probably move. But <laughs> I don't want to tell anybody anything 100% waterproof other than the microns. <laughs> because, yeah, I ended up giving Cameron my light box because I told him something was waterproof. <laughs> I, I noodle. All right. So, again, um. The Arteza 96, I think, were $65 for the whole set. That doesn't include the nice case like uh, Dev has. Dev bought his set in a case. And he's in UK, so I'm sure it was probably more. Um, so you can buy them in the nice black Velcro case, right? I just put mine in one of the BT -ski, B BTSKY ones. Um so these are, I don't know what that breaks down to, Fif between 50 and 75 cents each for 96, less than a dollar each. The Zigcore Talkies, what are these, about $4 each, Eileen? Individual. Now, of course, if you buy, the, buy them in a set, they're going to be cheaper because you buy them in a set, they're always cheaper. But I think these individually run about $4 each. These are going to run you 60 cents. Um, yeah, about 65 cents because they just rounded up to 100 pins for $65. So 65 cents. These are going to be 65 cents a pin in a, in a kit. These, these are probably going to run you about $3 each, maybe four individually. Okay. So there's the price difference. Now, whether one is more light fast than the other. If you're going to do something more than just a color book page, you might want to look into that. Um, so, hi, Jeannie. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, and Eileen, of course, Eileen loves her Zig Kuretake, and she says they're well worth it. So it just depends on what you're going to do with it, guys. If you're just going to want a watercolor, if you're going to want to throw down a little bit of watercolor, uh, and base coat a color book page and just base coat a color book page as a back, you know, as a base of something. And you're going to go over it with, you're going to go over it with your uh, pencils. Then, you know, you might just want to go with, you know, Arteza, right? Okay. Terry said Blick has the Kuretakis for $2.99. So you're looking at $3 each for these, about 65 cents for these. Okay. Bye, Scoobs. Off to story time with the little one. Oh, Scoobs. So sweet. So cute. I miss the little ones. Mine, mine are not little anymore. Bye, Windsor. Thanks for stopping in. Okay, so now we're going to get to the project. So we've tested them out on the different papers, and we're going to do a watercolor on the smooth side of the watercolor paper. Maybe I should put a black paper behind it just so you can see where I am. Let's get a black, get a piece of black cardstock here because we're on a white base. So let's put this down just so you can kind of see where we are. There, that's better. 
All right, so we're going to start by, um, I think I got the bulk of, I'll try to get as much off of my hands as I can. I'll sing and dance with other kids now. Oh, that's adorbs. That's adorbs, Scoobs. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I just had a hiccup. <laughs> Hi, Candy Craft. I'm new to the live chat. What does the little wrench mean beside the name? That means they're mods. That means they can kick people out. <laughs> they can post links. Mods, mods are the only ones that can post direct links and boot people out. Yeah, so you'd be nice to the mods. Just saying. <laughs> be nice to the mods. Okay, so now let's go back to our book. And again, I wanted to do the acorns. Let me move that tray over for a minute. I wanted to do the little acorns at the beginning because I just think they're cute. All right, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get, um, I'm just going to get a regular pencil and I'm going to sketch this so light you probably won't be able to see it until I hold it up. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Terry goes, we have wrenches and we aren't afraid to use them. Yeah, trolls last about, mm, we give them two comments and then they're gone. <laughs> we give them one chance. We say, hey, don't be that way. And if they still continue to be that way, the next comment, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, again, here is, let me go ahead and do it up here. Here are the little acorns sketched out. I'm going to sketch them out uh, probably close to the same size. Probably close to the same size because this is about the same size paper, right? So I'm going to kind of sketch them out on the watercolor paper very lightly, about the same size. And I'm trying to keep it as light as possible. I After I sketch it, I might even kind of run my eraser over it and make it even a little bit lighter. But I'll start with enough for you guys to be able to see when I hold it up. But I'm very lightly sketching them out, okay? <clears throat> and then we'll put this one about the same. So we're going to try to follow her step-by-step -step demo. And I, I just like doing this every now and then. Um, normally, if I have a book like this and I want to do the do color, do this, I'll just look at this and do it. <laughs> I won't, you know, I'll just try my best to do it as close as I can. But I'm going to, when I do these demos, I try to read the step by steps, follow them as closely as we can, just for the sake of the demo, right? Let's make this one a little wider. I could probably, I don't really want them to touch. They're not really touching. They're close to touching, but they're not touching. All right, let's make that a little smaller so he fits. Let's fit that little guy in there. And again, when you do these kind of thing, guys, you know, you can try to make it look as much much like the original as you can. But don't, you know, if you want it perfectly exactly like hers, then just go make a copy, right? Um, but it's better just to practice your sketching them out and getting them, you know, fairly accurate. But, you know, um, you don't have to, you don't have to make it exact. Okay, that's pretty close. Um, good enough all right so now what i'm going to do i'm going to show you this up close okay this could be a little more round um okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my eraser well here let me hold it so you can see it for just a second now what i'm going to do is take my eraser and i'm going to kind of just is so i can still see it but I'm, I'm just kind of skimming the eraser over the lines to make it very, very light. One of the things about watercolor, it's not like if you pen and ink this or just pinned it, if you went over this with pen, after you did the pen, you could erase your pencil marks. But with watercolor, the, you're, you're going over, you're going over the top of your pencil lines and you can't erase them. I mean, you might be able to a little bit, 
but you won't be able to erase them completely. So you really want to have your pencil lines very, very light unless you want them to show. I mean, there's a, it's a style. There's a style to having your pencil line show as well. Nothing wrong with that. But, um, but it, it, you're, you can't erase them 100% once you go over them with watercolor, right? So it just depends. Uh, can Jean booted you? <laughs> Jean booted you, Eileen? Oh my God. Oh, that was, that was a while back, wasn't it? Not today. Okay, so I got a little bit of glue on the top here where the, it was in the thing. Okay, so now let's see here what, what we got going on. All right. Let's move the um, Kurataki and the Sharpie and my, let's move all that out of the way. I'm going to put my little tray right up here. I'm going to clean my tray out with a baby wipe. Okay. Have a have a clean spot right there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I am going to try to find the closest colors to these colors in my Artesia Arteza. It's a Z. It's a, it's Arteza. It's the Z. Uh, she did, and she will never forget. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is I want to find a yellow ochre, a raw umber, and a burnt sienna. Now I'm not going to go by the names of them, right? I'm going to just look at them and see which ones are the closest to those colors. Like, uh, I mean, I can tell you the names on them. I'll have to get my oh, magnifying glass. Like this one looks kind of reddish brown. It's called autumn red. Okay, that's called autumn red. So what I want to do is let me get that test sheet. Where's my test sheet? Let me get that back. And let's test to see what color. Let's just use the back. I just need a color chart. Okay, so is this close to my raw umber? Okay, I think that's pretty close to raw umber, right? It's a little darker, but we're going to water it down too. So I'm thinking that is probably close to raw umber, which is called autumn red. All right. So we're going to go with autumn red. We are going to go with, okay, let's see this one right here. I'm looking for something similar to yellow ochre. Okay. That's pretty close. This one is sun, sunset yellow. Okay, that's pretty close. It's a little brighter. It's a little brighter. But again, we can always, we're going to mix and everything. Yeah, the case, do, now the, the markers do not come in this case. And again, if you get one of these BTSKY cases, right, the, the marker lids are very thick and you probably won't be able to close it. I have no, I, I have no intention of zipping it up. But uh, Arteza, also has you can also buy these in a case dev the modernist colorist has the actual velcro black case that you can buy for more you know you can buy the set of 96 with the case okay i didn't buy it in the case i just bought it in the uh in this box here plastic box this is what the plastic box looks like. And, and they come in little trays. They are in trays. And it does come with a water brush. It does come with the water brush in that set. Okay. Okay. So now, these are the kind of pencil case I have all my pencils in. You know, pretty much except my, as Denise calls them, my crap pencils. Okay. So now we've got a yellow ochre, which is called, where's my, you get sun. Sunset Yellow A156, and then we're going to use the, for the um, Raw Umber, we're going with Autumn Red A118, okay, now let's find us a Burnt Umber, okay, a brown, so let's keep going up here, and probably this Walnut is probably going to be, let's test, let's test Walnut, and let's test these two colors. Okay, so this one, let's, I don't know which one I'm going to go with yet. Can you see the different browns there? One's a little darker than the other. Okay, so let's go with the lighter one first, which is called Walnut Brown. That's pretty good. There's Walnut Brown. Now let's see what this, um, Coffee, I think it's called. 
but wine is very little. Coffee. This one's called coffee. Okay. So the walnut has a little more red to it, and the coffee's a little browner. I'm going to go with the walnut. Okay. So we're going to put the coffee one back. And again, what I did is I put three... I put three in a space, three in a space. The reason I put the space between them, I could squeeze one in there, but the lids, see the lids are wider. So the lids take up all the space. So that's why I have to skip one every, every third one or so. All right. So we're going to go with those three colors. All right. So now let's see what she says to do. And we're going to use, we're going to use a tray and a water brush because we're going to use these as watercolors, right? If I want to add any extra dark, like final darks, maybe the, the little stem or something. All right. And I will go ahead and zoom. Well, I don't know. I'm pretty, this might be as good as we can get to get everything in. Okay. We'll, we'll start with this. If we need to zoom in, we will. All right, so um, I'm going to water these down and use them as watercolor because that's what she's using here. She's using watercolor. She's not using brush water brushes. If you have any questions, put them in caps so I see that you're talking to me. Lou, Dee, Dee are you going to do one acorn? No, I'm going to do them both. I'm gonna, I'm doing everything in the Arteza today. Yeah, just the Arteza. Yeah. Okay, so here's what she says. Acorns have a lot of texture to them. Using shadows, highlights, and lines to mimic that look is what you'll try to do here. By using different shades of brown, you'll create layers of wet and dry washes to really build up those darker areas. The bottom half of the acorn should appear streaky like the texture of a real acorn. You know how they look kind of like they have lines in them? Okay, so let's go through the steps. Work Number one, working on the bottom half of the acorn first, fill the areas with a light wash of raw umber mixed with yellow ochre. So we want to start with um, the, bo you know, the bottoms here. So let's go ahead and get out our yellow ochre and our raw umber. And I'm going to make, make watercolors out of them, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the colors here. In this case, she says a light wash of the two mixed. So I'm going to take my water brush. Just trying to stay here in camera. Hmm, is that going to put a shadow? Uh, we'll see. I'm trying to squeeze it all in. All right, so I'm going to mix these two together. Okay, there we go. And add, a, add a little water. And now remember, guys, if it's too light, you can always draw, let it dry or hit it with the heat gun and add more layers. We're going to treat it just like watercolor. Okay. I'm going to treat it just like watercolor. Okay. Um, working on the bottom half of the acorns first, fill the area with the... All right. So she's imagining this whole thing is filled with a whitewash. Okay. The whole acorn just to start us out. And I'm going to try my best to go by just by her steps. I mean, there's things I might do differently if I was just doing this by myself. There's a little piece of something, something on my brush. Um, but I'm going to try to do her steps, right? I'm going to try my best to just to go by her steps. Because uh, like, for instance, this step, I don't know how light her first layer actually was because she just shows the finished part, right? And talks you through it. So I, I would probably go ahead and put another layer on here of this color. But she doesn't say that. She just says, Fill the areas with a light wash of raw umber mixed with yellow ochre. So that's what we did. So I'm trying to follow our steps, right? After a few minutes, once dry. Well, we don't have to wait a few minutes. Once dry. Heat gun. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, after a few minutes, once dry, add a second wash of the same color. Okay, see, I guess I could have read ahead. I guess I could have read ahead. Try to mimic the streaky texture of an acorn by painting light lines from the top to the bottom of each acorn. All right, so now we're going to put on another wash. Okay, we're going to put on another. I might have to get some more out there. And I'm going to try to make it kind of... Uh, with the, you know, kind of do it like on the side of the brush to make it look a little streaky. All right, I'm going to have to zoom in. I'm going to have to, I can tell. You're not going to be able to see anything if I don't. Okay, now we'll just try our best to stay in. There we go, that's better. All right, okay. Is that better, guys? <clears throat> Can you see a little bit of the streaks? Okay, good. All right. Thanks, Terry. Terry, you're here a long time now. Don't you overdo your shoulder and stuff. Just saying. Okay, so this one could probably use... Let me go ahead and put a little bit more out because I'm running out here. So I'm going to put some more of both colors. Some more of the yellow ochre, which is really called sun, sunset yellow, and what um, the raw umber, which is autumn red. So I'm gonna put more, I'm gonna put more of both out here, okay? And I'm going to mix them because that's what she did. She mixed those two colors. I try to put about the same. I try to mix them about the same amount, okay? And um. Number three is add another layer using burnt umber. Okay, so let me just go ahead and just fix a few more of these streaks here because I'm not seeing them as much as I like to. Okay. Let's make this guy a little more pointy down there. Okay, Terry. Yeah, that's about how long I'm going to be here, too. About 30 more minutes. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my shows under three hours. Or, well, right at at or under three hours. And I'm trying to keep my um, videos that are just recordings. Are y'all hearing me? My microphone's kind of turned sideways. I hope y'all have been hearing me okay. All right, let me get a uh, Kleenex to clean my brush out here. All right, so her third, let's, she said, let it dry. So let's dry it with the heat gun again. Okay, thanks, Jean. Okay, so number three, there's only six steps. <laughs> we won't, you know, hopefully be here too long. Okay. <clears throat> Add another layer using burnt umber, which is our darkest brown, which we haven't used yet. Add another layer using burnt umber around the bottom, top, and sides of the acorn. You can blend any harsh edges out with water. Okay, so now we're going to go to our third color here. I'm going to put some of that down. Okay. And now we're going to get our water brush. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of water in it. We can always go darker. I mean, it's hard to go lighter, okay? Um, around the bottom, top, and sides. I'm guessing, I'm just by looking at the pictures, it looks like it's like up under this rim here. Okay. I could be wrong. I should have read ahead, maybe. <laughs> Her acorns are a little thinner. I made mine a little chunky. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to clean some of the pigment off. And with, just with water, I'm going to kind of try to blend it a little bit with just the water. Okay. So I knocked off the pigment on, off on the Kleenex. And then with water, I'm just kind of smoothing it out there. What did Eileen say? Um, okay. I don't know. <laughs> no, what Eileen. Okay. So let's... um. Add some more dark underneath here along the side. I'm gonna have to put some more out. I'm gonna have to put some more marker out. 
clean off the excess, and then blend out with just pure water. So you get all the pigment off, but off with the Kleenex, and then kind of blend it out. So we're going to have to add more layers. But we're getting there. <clears throat> all right, so let's put, uh, well, let, let's go ahead and see what, let me, you know what, let me just go ahead and read all the steps. Okay, then the step four is to fill the acorn tops with the light wash of burnt umber and then apply additional letter, le layers as you did here, darkening the shadow areas such as the center and sides of the top. So we're going to do the same thing we did here on the tops, right? Let the previous layer dry once again and create a scale-like pattern on the top of the acorns with a thin brush tip and burnt umber trying to keep paint lighter in areas where the paint is lighter and darker where the shadows have formed. Finally, fill in the acorn stems with burnt umber and you're done. Okay, so, it's, so really it's just going to be about layering up these colors, using the colors she suggests. So now we're going to do the acorn tops with a light wash of the burnt umber, which is the darkest color. So let me put a little bit more out here. All right, here we see. I'm going to put a little bit more out. Okay, and we're going to do a wash of that on the tops. This is just to start with. I could really just go right over the stem, but I'll just, I'll wait on it because... I'm trying to follow it as closely as she suggests. I mean, following her suggestions. Right. How are we doing, guys? Okay. So the other thing to remember, guys, I'm using a book that's, she's using watercolors. I wanted to test it with our Arteza right, as a watercolor. Now, we could always go straight to, like, for instance, the stem. We could probably just do, let's dry this first. Well, I really don't want to put the stem on because I got to do more washes with these. But, like, the stem is a very almost dark brown, solid dark brown. We could take it directly from here for the stems. I don't want to do that till the, after we get the rest part of the other parts done. Okay, so now we're going to go back and um, let's go back down here to some more. And now it's kind of like looking at the picture. You're going to kind of, I'm going to put all the colors out here again. I'm going to put the, uh, well, I it's her color is yellow ochre and it's called uh, sunset yellow. Okay, I'm going to put some more sunset yellow out and some more uh, autumn red, which is our raw umber, because we're going to blend those two, mix those two. And then we're going to have some more down here of our burnt umber down there. Now I'm going to mix these two colors together to kind of get not quite yellow, not quite raw umber. Okay, and I'm going to start adding some more layers. I might add a little bit more of the brown in there. So now I'm kind of looking at her picture here and trying to kind of match the colors. Darker right up underneath here on the edges. Little, you know, I want to keep those streaks kind of in there. And if you need to blend anything out, like, like right here on this edge, then clean out your brush and just go with water to kind of blend that in so you don't have a harsh edge there. And my color does look, I'm, I'm, I can see it's a more yellow than hers. Um, if I really wanted to, I guess I could use more um, more of the red than you know than the yellow. If if I'm trying to match the colors, I could go ahead and pick up more of that color, you know, and 
and make it more orangey red. And I don't know if the, if it's picking that up on the camera, but uh, so let's let that dry now and do the a little on the other one. Okay, a little dark right under there. We're gonna do the little um, like honeycomb uh, shaped tops here in a minute. As I look up on camera, they, they look much more yellow in in on camera. But look, I'll tilt it. That's a little more of the true color. They're still a little yellower than hers, but they're not as yellow as when I lay it flat. It's a little bit more. Okay. Well, yeah, it looks, it looks good. Okay. All right. So uh, let me put down some more of the dark color here. And I'm not limited to just these colors, guys. Whoops, that's the... I'm not limited to these three colors. I could get, you know, I have 96 colors. I could be blending and mixing. But I'm trying to just use the three that she recommended in the book right here, right? <clears throat> I'm kind of trying to stick with that. Okay, so now I'm going to go with the darker. And let's just kind of do almost like a little honeycomb shape. Um which can get another wash over it uh, as we as we go or after this dry after we dry this okay oh, okay if i was a squirrel you want to get one <laughs> thanks nanamo <laughs> but I wanted y'all just to see what we could do with these artes artesas. I mean, there's with a Z, it's hard to say. Um, you know, other than just like using them as a wash in a color book, I wanted you to see that you could use them as watercolors, right? And you can take as much time as you want to do all these little shapes. I'm not, you know. I'm not overly stressing about them. I'm just kind of getting them on there. Just kind of like a little honey, kind of like a little honeycomb pattern on there. <laughs> All right, I need a little bit more. <clears throat> Let's put a little bit more in, in my tray here. And you don't have to have a porcelain tray. Um, most of the... Um, your can that your neo color twos come in you can use all that anything like that um you could use a piece of glass with white paper under it um okay so now let's go ahead and let's kind of darken around this edge here of the stem we're gonna do the stems last i want a little bit darker right in there Let's go ahead and put another little bit of layer here of color on this one. And then again, clean clean off the brush and just get just water if you want to smooth it out. Um, this is on watercolor paper. Now remember, this is not going to work like this on your, um, it's not going to work like this on your uh, cardstock, right? All right, now let me dry this. bit more of the dark I'm just all I'm doing when you see me go up here is I'm just you know swatching some out on the tray no questions or anything but hey Colleen anybody else popping in thanks everybody for being here 
trying to keep it all as much as I can in frame. I mean, uh, as much information as I can inside here. Of course, you don't have to make it look like um, you don't have to have every line. Um, you can you can fade some out down in here. It'll have a few less lines that are, are obvious. And then the shadows, you could have them darker. It's essence of acorn tops. I'm just doing this with the water brush. You don't even have to use a water brush. You could just use a regular paintbrush, but you'll be also dipping in water. You don't have to dip in any water uh, when you're using a, a water brush. It's just, for me, it's just more convenient. I just like using water brushes. All right, something like that as a start. All right. Oh, thanks, Connie. Don't forget to thumbs up. Thanks, everybody. All right, now let's dry this. So now I want to put out a little bit more. I'm going to put out a little of all three colors here because I want to put a little bit more color in here. So let's go more with the redder color than the yellow. Put a little bit more yellow out, but I'm not going to mix the two solid together. All right. All right. So now I'm going to go in here with the uh, more of the raw umber reddish color. And let's just add some more. more shade you know more color and again i am still trying to keep some of those streaks all right now i'm going to go in here with the darker color right up under the and before it dries you want to you know clean your brush off and then kind of feather it down while it's still wet so you don't have a harsh line there now there might be more of a harsh line if it's a sh real harsh shadow but uh, you, if you do it while it's wet, you, you'll have better results. Okay, so now let's go over here. Again, going in here more with the red color, a little bit of the darker, because this one's a little bit more in shadow over here. My paper is peeling just a little. That means you'll see the fibers come up just a little. Okay, I need a little bit more of the red. The raw umber. Cleaning it. Blending it with just water. How we doing? Um, oh, you like mine? <laughs> Thanks, Gabriel. All right. Uh, so you can kind of see now, I just need a little bit more darks, like right up close to the top there. Just a little. Okay. So I like those. I see B. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go back on the tops again. Uh, I think it needs just a little bit more of the uh, yellow ochre. So I'm going to put just a yellow ochre down with very, and mix it very, just with a tiny bit of the red, raw umber reddish color, just a little bit. And I'm going to just give this a little more life. I'm going to just put a little bit more wash. Now I'm not scrubbing it because I don't want to get rid I don't want to get rid of all the lines that I just drew in there, right? But I'm just going to kind of add a little bit more of the yellow color to it. Just like that. Just a little bit. Okay. 
<laughs> oh, thanks, guys. All right, now I'm going to go in with just a little bit of the brown, the raw, the burnt umber, and I'm just going to shade it just a little bit more on the edges here. Okay, just a little bit more, a little bit more um, depth here. And I'm probably going to dry it and do it even a little bit more. Okay, right in here, I'm going to need a little bit more dark. And we're going to do the stem with just the straight marker here in a minute. Okay, needs a little bit more down in here. Okay, maybe a couple little, even little splotchy bits. You know, just to give it a little bit more. This needs to be darker down there, but we got to dry it first because all we're going to be doing is lifting paint. Thanks, Laura. Laura says it's looking good and nutty. <laughs> okay, thanks, Laura. All right, now I'm going to get a little more of the brown. A little more of the brown, and I'm going to go back in here and just add a, a few more little um, lines. I've kind of lost a little bit of those here and there. There's a little the little uh, acorn topper lines. And, and I know mine's not exactly the same shape. That's okay, guys. You don't have to copy it exactly. Okay. And then I think what I want to do is I do want to kind of blend this line out there. It's a little harsh line. Even if I have to go back over it with some more of the... <laughs> they look a little nutty. Okay. All right. Let me dry because it's going to just feather if I. All right. I just want a few more little lines. I'm running. I want to. I'm ready to about wrap this up. So I'm going to get these stems in before we go, and show the book one more time. And just so you can see. And then again, we can go back underneath and get that nice and dark right up under there. Okay. Let's put my little bit more brown out there. Okay. And then on this side, just a little darker here. Water it down just a little. And then a little bit darker up in here. Maybe a little bit over in there. <clears throat> All right, now let's go ahead and do the stem. Let me dry. It's a little wonky on there, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to take the brown and just do the stems right in. Just, just paint them right in. Might take two layers. We'll see. Okay. I need to be a little thicker. Let's do it a little fatter there. Okay. And then maybe even just a little, a little bit right along the Like where it's sitting down in there. Something like that. How do you think? You look like squirrel. Like look squirrel in the movie. 
Yes, these, uh, Galena, these are the Arteza, the Arteza. And other than doing those stems directly on here, we did everything like it was a watercolor. You put it out on a tray, you use your water brush, and you use them just like watercolor. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put out just one more little batch of brown here and maybe just try to do a little bit of cleanup, like right along. This one's a little skinny and a little weird, but I'm going to just try to do a little bit of... You know, and they're going to be bumpy. They're going to be bumpy, right? Because they're um, knobby, if you will, right? They're knobby. I need to dry that. Do a little bit more, little some of those little lines there. Just make it a little more rough on that side there, maybe just a little. This side's a little wonky, but we'll roll with it. No two nuts are alike. No two nuts are alike. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, we got a little pen here. We'll sign it. There we go. There's my nuts. <laughs> All right, so now let me back out, guys. Okay, I'm going to back out so you can just kind of see the size of everything here. And, uh, <clears throat> and again, just using a porcelain tray. You don't need a porcelain tray. Um, you can just use the lids on a lot of pencils, come in, uh, you know, white tins or your Neo Color 2 tops. Use that, you know. Okay, so let's move out of the way again. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Terry. I said you need to draw a fist in the natural form. <laughs> so this is the book that we worked out of. Watercolor with me in the forest. Dana Fox. She does have a website. Um, she lives in Ontario, Ontario, Canada. Her website is, wait a minute, let me go here. Watercolor-workshop.com. She has watercolor workshops. So, and this book is awesome for beginners. And again, you know, we just use the uh, Arteza markers as watercolors, right? You can just use watercolors. You can use your Neo colors. You could use your, you know, any watercolor you, you have there. But anyway, so there's our little nuts. <laughs> so I hope y'all enjoyed this. And uh, thanks, Terry, for putting a link in the, in the, in the um, description. Or, uh, yeah, in the, in the chat. And uh, so that's what we did today. Hope you all enjoyed that. Don't forget on Wednesday, we are going to work in, we're going to work in Colorist Secrets number two by Helen Elliston. We're going to do, this is going to be our Wednesday project. Now, that being said, I am going to, this video will go up now, obviously. Here comes a cat. Let's like smooth this over. Um, this is going to go up on uh, immediately after the show. But I have another video that I recorded that I'm going to put up tomorrow on Tuesday. That is a pre-sketching pre from The Colorist 2. Okay, so there'll be another video up tomorrow that's not a live. It's just a recorded video. You want to come over here and say hi, Oliver? Come here. Come here, baby. You want to say hi? Come here. Let's just, let's just let you pet. This is Oliver. He's the big guy. He's the big guy. And um, <laughs> you're welcome. And hi. Hi, G. Thank you, Pacola. You're the best. You're the best. You're welcome. 
I hope everybody has a great day. Don't forget, uh, Janet comes on at 1. Eileen will be bossing her around. I mean, Janet will be doing an awesome project at 1. And uh, Jean comes on at 4 Eastern. You want, you want Mama play? You want Mama play? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.